Hello! So today I'm going to do some videos on language arts, top best homeschool curriculum picks, my favorites for, hold on, let me get the screen cleaned off, for language arts. So I'm planning to do a few different videos on these because there's quite a lot of different options. So today I'm going to show you some for neurodiverse kids, autistic kids, gifted kids. They're a variety of different curriculums, so there should be something relatively for everybody depending on whether you use an all-in-one curriculum or different ones. Anyway, take a look at these because they're pretty sweet. Of course, I have products of the day, which to be honest, kind of my favorite part. I have this product that my kids love. Oh, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a product I wouldn't buy again. That's just me. And you can take a look at it and see what you think because it's very tempting. It's, I, anyway. First product is Dissect It, which to be honest, I feel like they're spelling Dissect wrong, but I'm probably spelling it wrong. They're probably spelling it right. So this is, it's like in jelly. Now, if you do, there's a curriculum called, I'm sure you all have heard of it. It's a Christian curriculum, Classical Conversations. And in it, they, they don't, their science program is a little, it's different. And one of the things they say is, oh, dissect a crawfish or dissect an owl. And you can buy crawfish to dissect, you could buy owls to dissect um, and see what's in their stomach. Because if I was, because of this, the formaldehyde and, and things like that in a lot of them, I was hesitant to do that. But I wanted the excitement of um, a real, you know, like dissecting something. But I didn't want it to be, I didn't want chemicals. I'm a very anti-chemical person. It make, they make me very nervous. That's why I don't do a lot of chemical science experiments. You're never gonna see me be like, oh, let's explode this and see how it goes. No. So take a look at this because it's, I believe it's non-toxic. That's usually how I roll. I know my nice neatly made bed. Yeah, that's also how I roll. Okay, so you dissect it. It's jelly. My kids loved it. So I bought two more. And then after you can either A, rebuild the skeleton if you want and put it back in and it gives you another pack of jelly that you can re-gel it. So dissect it. I think it's $14. They come at Walmart. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them a lot of places. Next product I wanna show you, which is kind of sweet. I fell in love with all these highlights products. The highlights book, their high five magazine. Oh my gosh, thumbs up. You can get it free on the Libby app, but to get it in person and get some delivered, super sweet. But anyway, these are different. They got them for all different levels. I'm sure you've seen them. So how old are you? And you can put the candles on. So you're just like learning a few different skills, right? One, two, three, and then you cut them out, cut and paste. So different skills. And if your child's a little older and you're like, hey, how do I get my kids to do school? I have kids, one child, unbelievably difficult to get him to do school. And so I thought it's not my problem anymore. It's on his list. He's got to do schoolwork. If he wants to play like certain iPad games, yeah, I get it. You have to do your choice and you have to do schoolwork. Now, when he does scream, I do work with him as to what is the most difficult because I've read a number of books and whatever is the most difficult, we can work that out together. But even, but some stuff still has to get done. And so, you know what I'm saying? Like either way, you, what you can do is just wait till your child wants something or asks for something because they will no matter their age. If they're like 16, they're gonna be like, hey, can you give me a ride? Hey, can I have some money? If they're younger, they're gonna be like, hey, can I stoop later? Hey, can I such and such? Absolutely, because you're on their side, absolutely. First we do this, then we do that. It's not a punishment, it's just life. It's just an easy way to get things done. That way it's not your problem. I don't worry about his dishes getting put on the counter. I don't worry about his clothes being picked up because as soon as he wants to play something, that's motivation enough to get that stuff done. Now, is there grumbling? Yes, I'm okay with a little grumbling. That's fine because that's his internal process working stuff out. He's still young. And second of all, there are certain chores that I have subbed out, like making his bed for some reason was so dramatic and so over the top that we've subbed it for cleaning the table. So I do work with them, but at the same time, stuff's gotta get done, right? And it goes, I like it because it goes numerically. So for example, look, now we're working on twos, right? Now we're working on twos. Oh, you could see someone attempted that twos and then we're going to threes so i like that because it's, it's progression that way natural progression okay i'm going to show you let's get into some language arts we're all over the map here people we are all over the map that's how i roll just deal with it i tried to organize it and then i was like you know what f it it's not fun organizing sometimes so here we go 
So this is letters and numbers. Now what I like is this is basically your first copy workbook. That's what you're doing. Just ignore some of this drama here today because some of this might have to be redone. This is your first book. Now I was letting my kindergartner do it. I've, I've since pulled it away and decided today, no, I'm gonna wait till he's a little older because of all the drama with it. So we're just gonna wait just a little bit till he's older, just for this specific curriculum because I don't wanna waste it. If you're not really gonna attempt and you're just gonna scratch stuff or whatever, or if it's just too much of a headache, no, we'll just pull it up till he gets older. But anyway, so it's kind of your first copy book, right? Because here you go, two, two, and it's only $14. It actually comes with a box. You can get the box, which I did, where you can actually, it comes with a bunch of wood strips and you can make, you can make the letters out of the wood pieces. It, it Whatever, you don't need that. You don't. And uh, this is sufficient. And then look, you get a little bit bigger a little bit bigger. I'm gonna show you two in the curriculums I'm showing you today. I'm gonna show you the curriculum that taught my son who has autism and apraxia, a double whammy to read. And we tried several different curriculums too. So don't think we didn't. But first up, I wanna show you a language arts curriculum that you may not have seen before. Wait, where is the, oh, Elemental Phonics you probably saw. And I have in my pile to show you. Where did it go? I like Elemental Phonics. Oh, here it is. This one starts, you can start it whenever your kid's ready, but it says preschool literacy. So this one starts with letter identification. Okay, so we're doing letter identification first, right? A, B, C, circle the missing letter. So I like this, all right? Color the pictures, and it's like 10 bucks a book. And I think there's about four books you need to, to start reading. The only thing I wish is when you got higher up in the books that they had color in them, just for certain letters. But So color the pictures that start with the letter at the top. Okay, so we're just doing letter identification first. Then you move on to sounds. Then you move on to blending the sounds. Not in this book, those are other books. Then you move on to blending the sounds. And so I think, yeah, this is how this woman, um, Lady, I wanna say her name is Lady A, but I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, she taught all her kids to read. So I think it's, I think it's great. Box, circle the picture that rhymes with the first one. Box, box, net. Yet. So I like it. I like it. Um, it doesn't even need to be preschool if your child's older. Do not feel bad about that. That is okay. You are homeschooling, sweetheart. There is not, it's not a race and they will catch up when they are older. If they are meant to catch up, most kids will. It's not a big deal. I'm going to talk about moving beyond the page that I have showed you in. It is great for ADHD kids. It's great for a lot of kids. It does it by years. It goes it's for gifted kids, but I'm telling you, I've showed you in it. I think ADHD kids, it's brilliant for them as well. It goes five to seven is the first level. And then you can go um, five to seven, seven to nine. No, <laughs> five to seven, six to eight, and seven to nine. Okay, so anywhere that you are in there. I will say the five to seven is pretty easy. Like a little too easy for six year olds and stuff. Like there's no way some of them are gonna sit down and do a lot of the stuff you got going on there. And the five-year-olds may emotionally be too young, but by the time they hit six, they're too, they're too old to want to sit down and do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so I would go for the next level up if I were you and you're choosing between two levels. So let me explain to you how it works. It comes with this curriculum. Now we're talking language arts. So this curriculum, what it does is it deals with, it has different books here. It has four. This is the six to eight, so it's the second level, but the first level is the same concept. It's got concept one, concept two, concept three, and concept four. Each concept comes teacher's manual, student manual, teacher's manual, oh, but they would say the same thing. All right, oh, here it is. So student manual, very thick, um, teacher's manual, very small. Okay, so it doesn't teach your child to read. It assumes that your child knows how to read by the time you hit the six to eight concept. You can still do it if they don't know how to read, I'm just telling you, um, it's more hands-on if they don't know how to read, right? Because you have to read it for them, which is fine, not a big deal. But let's talk about how it does language arts because it blends in a bunch of different stuff and I have sectioned off some pages here to show you. I don't like their picture book choices. As far as picture books go and selections for children, I have a bunch of videos on the best ones if you ask me. These are for kids who have short attention spans. These are for kids, but they're still great books. If you go to Torchlight, it's a secular program. You don't have to get the program. 
but the books, and it's $20 for the program, for the literature program, but the book list is free. You can look at the book list and go to your library and get those books. The grade one is my favorite and I got them all because you can get them at the library, most of them, and they are great reads. They are great reads. So if you're looking for like really great books you want to read with your kids, that you want them to be interesting and such, those to me would be the winner. The books for this, for moving beyond the page, they're too wordy. Every one of the books that I go through, it looks great. It's won awards and I have problems with books that win awards. I just do because we read them and I'm like, okay, it's great. I see why it won awards. Great. Great. Good for whoever this, you know what I mean? Great. Except the people offering the awards, they're not five, six and seven year olds. <laughs> like they're not reading it for, so anyway, that's just my thing. But don't, I mean, don't necessarily let that deter you from this curriculum because I've done this curriculum without reading any books. When we get up to the seven and nine, which I'm going to show you, no, you can't for the language arts potion, but see how it's all blended in. So this is geography history. This section right here is this concept in the six to eight. This is concept. I want to say four, but let's see. This is concept three. Remember four concepts a year, which means each concept, right? Like concept one is community. Concept two is relationship. Concept three is culture. Concept four is matter of movement. In there, they have language arts mixed in various grammar things to take a look at. Okay, but it assumes by the time you get to six to eight that your child can read and write sentences. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, I do it even with a child who's not able to read and write. So it is doable. It's just, you know, you're not utilizing the full thing. Your child's not sitting down going, rah, 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 rah. but whatever. Okay, so let's talk about the language arts portion in this would be recognizing the plot. So read a story with a simple plot that involves a kind of problem. Mysteries work well for this. Ask your child to identify the problem, three or more elements in the story and how the problem was solved. Okay. So, and then you would go to this page and like, what's the problem? Event one, event two, event three. And then what was the solution? Now the book, they also recommend, they have a bunch of books that I got, which they have Cinderella in a bunch of different languages, not languages, but like countries. All right. So that is how... It is done, like folklores and fairy tales. Okay, so, and then, and then it's got answer the question of the book, y Ye Shen, which I didn't read, because again, a little wordy. I just haven't sat down and been like, hey guys, let's tackle this book. Okay, so you see how it is. So this, the Cinderella elements chart. Okay, so here it is. The Egyptian Cinderella, the Irish Cinderlad, and Ye Shen, which again is kind of a concept of Cinderella. So it assumes, I feel like by the time you get to this concept, six to eight, if you're not reading or writing, you know, you're still learning though. That's the thing you're still learning. Okay. So that is another one. Let's take a break from this, from language arts. So it, but every book has language arts in it. Every book has math mixed in it. Um, like nouns and stuff. You'll learn nouns throughout it. So it is just a, a variety of different materials like here look at this so money it's like values of money fill in like which each one is right and uh yeah so it it deals it's got counting by fives and tens so it does have math and it does but it's not a full-on math curriculum it's not strong enough to be a math curriculum but it does have flow charts of money wants and needs work money save spend and give okay so anyway, there's a lot of different portions in these books, in these four concepts that teach a lot of different skills, which I think is really great and really neat. Back to another curriculum. This is the one that, that is the simplest. We started off using the, like you can start off using this, reading eggs, whichever you want for this for letter identification and then move on to reading eggs for letter sounds if you are not great at that. But this curriculum really, it really took my kid into reading. It is the Craft Right Brain Readers, my autistic kid. At that level 1A. So even today, watching him read is like amazing. So I've tried to do this before, so I'll go through it quickly. Is, and then on the back, is that a snake or is it a worm? See, it's using and tells you how to hold it up and show them. So it's using mnemonic devices to help you get those words. And then you sit down. And this is, these are the sounded out ones. Fat, pat, rat, sat, after they know their sounds. These are the words that you just need to memorize that are in here. Is, my, and a, and they're in order. Then that's their first story, dude. That is their first story. 
And then they learn how, so they build on it and it's watching him build on it and be able to finally sound out things and read stories. It's amazing. It's amazing. I could not be prouder of myself for teaching him to read. <laughs> Let me show you the seven to nine moving beyond the page curriculum. Their language arts is done completely different. Then when you get to seven to nine, they have separated into science. They've separated it into, so there's not really, there's kind of concepts, but there's not just four concepts. They have separated it clearly into, let me show you, and everything comes labeled and ready to go. So each of these, ugh. so this is like concept two, unit three. So if you were to start at concept one, this is concept one, unit one is Tornado the Book Tornado. They go through Charlotte's Web. They go, again, it's very good language arts program. And uh, this is the student and teacher manual all in one, near as I can tell, because these are the vocabulary words. This is telling you um, what your typical day looks like. I don't think that's true. 30 minutes, 60 minutes. I don't necessarily think that schedule is true, but maybe if you do it, I don't know. Go ahead. So farm life, Venn diagrams. It tells you, you explain Venn diagrams to your kids. Um, the storm, ask your child to read chapter one in the book. See, so this assumes your child can read, but I would do it reading to them. Um, not that he can't read, but that's just a lot of words. So answer the following question. Can you summarize chapter one? What's the problem? What do you feel? How would you feel if you saw a tornado? What would you do? Can you name all the people in the cellar who's not in the cellar? And can, how would you describe the cellar? Now, I do language arts a bit differently where I don't necessarily, like, we read for enjoyment. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're just reading, and then we can just discuss it. So I would just look through here and be like, okay, let's discuss it. Um, but they have a lot of different activities in here for, so, for example, like, the very first one I read was to draw a, a draw tornado, right? Okay, time transition worlds, beginning, middle, and end. So... It teaches you, again, a lot of stuff as a result at the end, eventually, finally, in the end, last, lastly, to conclude. And then the beginning, at first, first. So you see how it teaches these elements that you just, I personally would not think of to teach. So the topic sentence, detail one, detail two, deep, and conclusion. So it teaches you a lot of stuff that you can do orally if your child can't hand, right? And if they can, now what this curriculum is trying to do is so that by you head, so this is the seven, to, the seven to nine, by the time you get to the nine, age nine curriculum, your child should be doing it independently every day. My child is finally, as of today, doing his schoolwork independently only because he didn't want to wait for me. So we got up and he did it and I was like, is he doing his schoolwork? And he like did it all and I was like, and not only that, he did it faster than if I sit with him and did it with him. I do not understand that. I was very confused about it. I was like, what? You've done math, reading, and um, handwriting? Like, you've done it all? At least, like, those main things that need to be done every day, and you did them all. And I was like, wow. It was very fast. Whereas if I sit with him, it seemed to take forever. I don't know. So anyway, that just opened up a lot of freedom in my day. And I was like, score. Because um, then I don't have to worry. But so let's look at some of the books. So this is American Heroes. Charlotte's Web, A Day, One Day in the Tropical Rainforest. I've never heard of that book. The Whipping Boy, I've actually haven't heard of that. Family and the Rich, I actually haven't heard of that. Um, Iggy So, still haven't heard of it. Morning Girl, nope. Poppy, nope. Sarah Plain and Tall, have heard of that one. Um, Who Was Helen Keller, of course I heard of that one. Uh, Communities and Culture, is that a book? I don't know. I don't know if that's a book or not, but it says language arts. So you see how this curriculum progresses? And then that would be like, so one of the end ones, because I was looking at the end ones today would be this one right here, American Heroes. And so it's that book I showed you during the history one, American Heroes. Tells you right away the required books you need for this. And then this is the following materials. It's nothing dramatic. It's like you need pens and papers. Like that's what it is for the most part, at least written down here and occasionally like some tape. Okay, how do citizens change their community? So this is like what you're gonna be discussing. Does it have, anyway. So what's a hero? And then it teaches you, you're working on your kids with an objective is and people. So you see, it's a very good language arts curriculum. Again, assuming your child can read um, by the time you get up here, but if they can't, you just do it with them. But so, yeah. What are three things, um, what three things was Je Jefferson most proud of? Now, the thing is, is about this particular book, American Heroes, 
The thing is, is it's not that interesting a book. Again, some of their book sessions aren't that interesting. I haven't read Tornado yet, but I have it and I'm looking forward to it. I read Shadow Swap when I was like a little kid. So I haven't read it since, but I've read the prequel with this pig and how he became Charlotte's uh, pig and how he ended up at uh, where he ended up and stuff. It was a good story. Can't remember it, but it was a good story. Um, and I liked it. I read it a couple times, accidentally picked it up the library a few times. It was good. But the 50 American Heroes Every Kid Should Meet. I know everyone loves it online. Like I, I'm not saying homeschoolers rave about it online. I haven't seen that, but just people, regular average non-homeschooling people love it. And then I, I just don't like it. I don't think it's that interesting for this age. I think all these books, they need to be just a little older, but again, maybe if your child's really gifted and so he's like, his brain is at a age nine level, he's like, yeah, this works. So I just don't think it's that interesting, but it's still doable. And it's only like one page per thing. I just think there's more interesting ways to discuss the heroes than stating what they do. I think, I think there's more interesting ways, but that's, Goodness. Maybe I'm a book snob. I don't know, but everyone's got their preferences as to as to what they like and what they don't like. Okay, so there you go. That is the language arts. There you go. I've showed you a few curriculums. I have a few more to show you at some time. Um, because again, I bought a Becca. I bought um, all about reading. I bought this one, another easy curriculum that I think is great. So I bought, I mean, all these language arts curriculums, all in one language arts curriculums, different language arts curriculums. I bought them all. And uh, yeah, these are some of my favorites. So I hope you like them too. Bye-bye. Please like to subscribe. Yes. And, and hit the bell for notifications.